Hello, friends. This month's theme is reconnect, build the bridge. What do you think is the opposite of anger? It's peace. All this month, we will be talking about peace. We all lose our temper sometimes, and we don't always agree with each other. Sometimes it seems easier to build walls of anger than bridges of peace. But when we make peace with others, it's like we're building a bridge across to the other side. We define peace as proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Our scripture this month comes from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 18. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. When we edify each other, we build each other up. I hope you enjoy this week's so-and-so show and continue to work on learning the Apostles' Creed. See you next time, friends. What happened to the rest of the bridge? We were almost done. Have you been eating the peeps? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Lawson. And Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. We are so glad you're hanging out with us on this very special day. We sure are. And now some interesting facts about Easter. Oh. Cool. cool. I got a rope. Watch this. Boom. Uh -huh. Cool. All right. And you got an egg. A little <laughs> egg. Oh, jelly beans. Oh, fun. Okay. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Interesting Easter fact number one. Americans consume more than 16 billion jelly beans every year. That is actually enough jelly beans to circle the globe three times. That's a lot of jelly beans. Do you have any more facts? Do I have more facts? Brandon, I'm a facts machine. You're a facts machine? Forget it. Oh! oh. 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 Good catch. Thank you. Oh, okay, here we are. Interesting Easter fact number two. On April 1st, 2007, the largest ever Easter egg hunt had 9,753 children searching for 501,000 eggs. That's nuts. No, it was eggs. It's an egg hunt. It's right here. Interesting Easter fact number three. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Bible story time with Kellen! Oh. Thank you. No! Ah! 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 Hey guys, happy Easter to you both. Right back at you, Kellen. Happy Easter to you. I love Easter. Easter's so fun. I'm so glad today is Easter. What story are you telling, Kellen? Uh, Easter? Great. Okay. Before I tell you about Easter, I think it's best if I give you a little backstory. In fact, we should really start in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the earth and the sky, and, well, everything. He made a man named Adam and a woman named Eve. Hey, I'm Adam. Do you come here often? I'm Eve, and, uh, no, I just got here. Cool. Me too. Adam and Eve lived peacefully in paradise with God until they made a very poor choice. You see, God had only given them one rule. Don't eat the fruit from a certain tree. But... Hey, let's eat from that tree. Once they broke God's rule, the world became broken, and sin separated people from God and broke their relationships with one another. There was no more peace, but God had a plan. 
Years later, God chose a man named Abraham. I'm old. Like really old. Like first generation iPod old. He was old. And even though he didn't have any children, God had promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed through his descendants. The whole world? <laughs> Did he say descendants? So Abraham's wife, Sarah, had a Ooh. baby named Isaac. And Isaac grew up and had two babies. And then they grew up and had even more babies. Abraham's descendants grew and grew. And they became known as the Israelites, God's chosen people. But they still didn't have peace. They didn't have peace when the Israelites were taken as slaves in Egypt. Let my people go! And they didn't have peace when God chose Moses to lead people out of slavery. The Lord has parted the sea so we can escape Egypt. Follow me. They didn't have peace when God led them to the promised land. Where's the milk and honey? I thought it'd be bigger. I wish we had a king like the other nations. So God gave them a king. Hello. I am your king. Meh, I've seen better. We want a new God. <clears throat> Nothing brought God's people peace. But God wasn't finished yet. You see, hundreds of years later in the town of Bethlehem, a descendant of Abraham that would bless the whole world was about to be born. The baby's name was Jesus, and he would become a man who loved people deeply. And he would show us how to love people the way he did. So Jesus loves us so much that he gave his life on a cross to pay for our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. That's because of what Christ has done. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Jesus paid for every sin ever committed and every sin that would ever be committed. People would no longer have to be separated from God. And with God's help, people would make peace with one another. But the story of Easter doesn't end with Jesus' death on the cross. On the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb to cover his body with spices. That's odd. Someone has rolled away the stone. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Mary Magdalene ah! ran to find Jesus' disciples. Peter and John returned with her, and in the tomb, they found linen cloths that were used to wrap Jesus' body. But they did not find Jesus. So they returned home, leaving Mary behind in the garden. I can't believe Jesus is gone. Hello, sir. Y you must be the gardener. Did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. Teacher. And as soon as the man spoke, Mary knew it was Jesus, alive. He had come back from the dead. Jesus is more powerful than sin. He's more powerful than death. And because of him, we can have peace with God and with each other, as God intended from the beginning. And that is the story of Easter. We should tell that story every year. We do. Awesome. It is awesome. Before Jesus, we had lost our connection with God. Our relationship was broken. Jesus' death and resurrection, it helped rebuild what was broken and reconnect us with our Creator. Amazing. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. Peace out. Oh, and Happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter! <laughs> Only one thing left to do now. Ooh, I was thinking the same thing. Oh. Huh. <sighs> so, uh, was that supposed no. to- No! Reveal the question! 
Why does Easter matter? What do you say, Lawson? I guess it's really the reason we're here. It's true. Jesus' resurrection is the most amazing thing that has ever happened. That's why we can't stop talking about it. What do you think? Why does Easter matter? Talk about it together. We'll see you next week for a brand new show. Bye. Happy Easter. Happy rope. What are you going to do with all that? Make a fort. <laughs> oh, a rope fort. Yes. First of its kind. You can't come in. Huh. Why not? You don't have the password. The password's the rope. Oh, well now I can come in. Wow, what a great show today. I love Easter. Me too. I thought you were very good today. Yeah? Totally. And you look great too. Have you lost weight? I have. Thank you for noticing. No problem. I also noticed that we seem to be out of popsicles. Any idea where they might have all gone? Uh, what? I don't. Uh, how could that happen? I mean, I didn't. Uh, look, over there! Oh, Lawson. Would you join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.